Good day and welcome to STO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, there are certain things in life that make me laugh, and one of them is people complaining that their major blunders have caused their businesses to be seriously damaged and made their competitors stronger. And then they want their governments to punish those who benefited from those blunders. Now, the latest outburst is by a European airline CEO, is the latest example. She said the EU should introduce financial measures to lessen the competition from Chinese airlines that can free fly across Russian airspace that, according to Marjorie Rintal, CEO of Royal Dutch Airlines, the Europeans can't. Now, anybody with a basic knowledge of geography knows that Russia is the largest country in the world and its land mass is larger than the USA and Canada combined. Stretches from the Baltic Sea to the Pacific Ocean as 11 different time zones. I mean, the difference between, sorry, the distance between Moscow and Vladivostok is 5,603 miles. To put this in perspective, the distance between London and Los Angeles, including the Atlantic Ocean, is only 5,400 miles. Now, to use the old phrase, as the crow flies, Airlines use the same principle and use the shortest route between two points. If you take out Russia, yeah, the crow flies across Russia, but not all airlines now. Now, when the EU and the US introduced their shock and awe sanctions, they intended to use them as a weapon to destroy the Russian economy and bring it to its knees. Now, one of these measures was a ban on all Russian flights into EU airspace, and then the US introduced a similar ban. This obviously stopped all Russian flights to Europe and all air passenger traffic. They obviously thought let, not letting us fly into the shitholes of Europe was going to lead us to overthrow the government. God, these are idiots. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website, <coughs> SEO Bricks Insight. And you can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. Now, after this ban was introduced, Russia decided to close its skies to all airlines from countries it considered unfriendly, i.e. the EU, US, G7 and the various other vassals that followed their policies, like Japan as another, South Korea. However, one man's loss is another man's gain, so airlines from BRICS and SCO member countries, as well as Others who didn't slavishly follow the sanctions took advantage of this serious miscalculation by the US and EU politicians. Now, as usual, the politicians who devised the sanctions did not think them through and once again did not understand the law of unintended consequences. So Moscow's ban on aircraft from uh, unfriendly countries forced EU aircraft to reroute, increasing their fuel consumption and their costs. Now, I live 1,800 kilometres south of Moscow and it's in the centre of European Russia. So it's another 700 kilometres to the Kazakhstan border from me and that a European airline needs to fly south of me just to bypass Russia and that's quite some distance. <clears throat> So this rerouting is very time-consuming and expensive now that Russia is uh, closed to European airlines, while Chinese airlines fly over it, and that can save anything between two to four hours. Now this is reflected in the price of tickets, so our costs are higher, says KLM's Rintel, in an interview with the Dutch broadcaster on WNL. Now, Rintel has suggested that Brussels and the EU should intervene to address this competitive imbalance. She says, Europe can at least look at how we can level the playing field by adjusting prices or looking at sanctions or alternatives, she said. Now, according to her, flights to Asia have become significantly more expensive for US, UK and EU carriers since Russia closed its airspace to them. I mean, accordingly, planes from Air France, KLM and other airlines flying to Japan, for example, have to bypass Russian territory by flying through the airspace of Kazakhstan and Mongolia. And that adds a number of hours to the flight time. I mean, the route from Paris to Tokyo now takes over 14 hours. I mean, the British airline Virgin Atlantic, partly owned by the weirdy beardy and self-published of Richard Branson, has been forced to suspend its flights to Hong Kong and to Shanghai. I mean, the Finnish airline 
Finnair has stopped flying at all to Japan, Korea and uh, China. I mean, flight times to Tokyo have increased from 9.5 to 14 hours, depending on the time of the year and the weather. Now, this has increased their fuel consumption, has made these flights completely unprofitable, um, but not to their competitors, who's not affected by the flight plan. Now, do bear in mind that Russia, uh, flying over Russia reduces the duration to flights to Asia by 25 to 40%. That's quite a long uh, distance. Now, now the world's not so favourite airline, British Airways, has suspended, although I mean, I think it says cancelled, all its service to China for the foreseeable future, particularly on the London, Beijing and Shanghai routes. I suppose the Russophobic idiot David Lammy, the new Foreign Secretary's journey to China to beg for some new trade deals would have taken longer as he couldn't fly across Russia. You know, Lufthansa has also stopped flying to China, particularly its flagship Frankfurt to Beijing route. Now, another problem is that the longer flights force European and American companies to replace the number of flights, increase their crew costs, and figure out how flights flights can fly longer with less stress in a new environment. However, at the same time, Others like Air India uh, has gained an advantage over its Western counterparts. Air India flight times to the US and Canada are now about an hour and a half faster than Air Canada and United Airlines, and also much cheaper. On comparable routes, Air India uses about 7.5 tonnes less fuel than its Western rivals, and that saves about $8,500 per flight. I mean, Hong Kong's Cathay Pacific also uses Russian airspace, it's a non-stop flight on the Hong Kong-New York route, which previously operated outside of Russian airspace and now takes full advantage of it. Now, there's also other major Chinese and Asian airlines operating in Russian airspace. And they've really saved the commercial advantage by offering the flights at the exclusion of their Western rivals. Also, the Middle Eastern airlines, which are state-owned and have never imposed sanctions against Russia, continue to use the Russian airspace. That gives Emirates, Qatar Airlines and Etihad, the three dominant players in the region, a seriously decisive advantage over their counterparts in Europe and the US. Now, of course, the ban on flights over Russia was a major blow to uh, Western Airlines, plus the increased price of aviation fuel. So, over the past two years, there's been a significant shift in traffic between the European and Asian car carriers on the routes between destinations in these continents. I mean, more and more passengers are flying with Asian carriers. I mean, Western Airlines were looking at options and scenarios to minimise the negative impact of the situation. I mean, they wanted to use code sharing with several airlines operate a flight together. And that means that the flight is physically operated by Asian Airlines as part of the ticket sold by the European company as part of the partnership agreement. But that doesn't seem to be working for them at the moment. So the main beneficiaries of the embargo on flights to uh, Russian flights to Europe are the airlines of countries that have not imposed sanctions on Russia. I mean, European countries have actually seriously punished themselves. I mean, traditionally there's been a large flow of passengers and cargo between Asia and Europe, and European airlines were actively flying in that direction and making good money. I mean, after the introduction of sanctions, most companies have stopped flying altogether because it's just become so unprofitable. I mean, the travel time has increased and the cost of fuel has increased to a level that uh, they just can't really uh, cope with. Plus other things related to aircraft maintenance and navigation have added to the cost. I mean, those who didn't fall for the US uh, EU sanctions to punish Russia have got a serious commercial advantage. And no matter how hard the Europeans try to sort of circumvent the sanctions by using the airlines of the Asian countries, these airlines are not going to give up the opportunity to make such good money out of the stupidity of the decisions of the Western politicians. I mean, at the end of the day, there's only one way out of the current situation that suits both Russia and Europe, and that's the lifting of sanctions. I mean, only then will it be possible to have normal cooperation on mutually beneficial terms. Because there's no particular advantage to either party in having a closed sky. However, it's noticeable that over 30 different countries' heads of state are heading to Russia for the BRICS summit in Kazan next week, 
with around 25,000 delegates and none of them have experienced flying into Russia and not even the Serbs. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobrexinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button and making a small donation. Don't forget to share and if you uh, please use the comments section. I love to read your comments, love to respond to them and I love getting them. Take care. I'll see you all soon. Bye.